Welcome to the teaching ministry of B.D. Hyman. B.D. Hyman's teachings will prepare you to face life's difficult challenges through the power and knowledge of God's Word. Join us now as we discover the truth in God's Word with B.D. Hyman. Hello and welcome to the program. Ephesians 3, 17 through 20 says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, depth, and height. People always want to know. They want to comprehend. Well, I'm going to teach you today how you can do that and go beyond your natural thinking. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, passes your own ability to understand the things that you know, the things that you can see and touch, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now here is the crux of the thing. Now to him who is able to do, to God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us exceedingly, abundantly above. Now, most people teach this particular scripture in the context of getting stuff. No matter how much you are believing God for, no matter how much you are expecting, God's going to give you more stuff. But that's such a limited view of the power and the scope of this Scripture. Just before we continue with that, I want to go over to 1 John 2, 4 and 5, which says, He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. See, all this works by truth, by God's truth. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. And leading up to this scripture about exceedingly abundantly above that God wants to do for you and will do for you if you put yourself in the right place is this focus on comprehending with all the saints what is the height and depth and width and full measure of the love of Christ, to know the love of Christ. Well, 1 John 2, 4 and 5 says that if you keep his word, this love is perfected in you. Everything always comes back to the word. Now, I want you to see this promise in a whole different light because, yes, God wants you to have nice things. He wants you to be financially blessed. But the goal, the focus of this awesome covenant, the thing that Jesus went to the cross and died for, was not just so that you could have a lot of stuff. The prosperity message has been so perverted by so many that serious Christians have actually, in great numbers, backed off it because they're so disgusted by it. God is more than Rolls Royces and mansions and vacation houses and Rolex watches. Trust me, these things are going to be burned up. You can have wonderful things, but that's not the purpose. I want you to see the scope of this promise, this exceedingly abundantly above all that you can imagine. In a situation that is so tenacious, so painful, so dangerous, so potentially disastrous that you can't even imagine a way out of it. There are situations where God's people can't even imagine God delivering them. It's so complicated and so involved that they can't see and they limit God to what they can see. This is what this is all about. I want you to really pay attention and I want you to grasp the, the measure of God's love for you through this. 
Well, you can't imagine how you can be delivered. You can't imagine how you can be well. You can't imagine how you can get out of the situation you're in. And that's why you need God to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you are capable of imagining and to put you in that place of healing, of wholeness, of deliverance. In Romans 4, 17 and 18, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things that do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed. See, this is what we're talking about. When you can't find hope in yourself, and this happens to all of us, if you can't see the result in yourself, contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. This is what we're talking about. This is what you can have when you can't within yourself imagine such a thing as your healing, your deliverance. Maybe you've been sick for so long. Maybe it's just so complicated. Maybe you've heard too many negative things. But God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you are capable of asking or imagining according to the power of the Holy Spirit who works in you. And he works by faith. And the Lord says that if you have faith even as tiny as a little mustard seed, he can work with that. And so God can put you into overdrive. He can put you into hyper faith when you're failing. If you have enormous debt and there's no way you can see of ever getting out of this, God can do exceedingly abundantly above whatever your emotional and mental limits are. If you're diagnosed with a, a debilitating or terminal disease that the doctors can do nothing with. People call me all the time and say, the doctors have given up. And I say, hallelujah, now you can work with God. And they don't understand that at first. Oh, it's terrible, terrible thing the doctors have given up. Great. They've done everything they can do. Now let God do what only he can do. See, this is the point, because God can do exceedingly, abundantly above your limits according to the Spirit in you. You need to get this and you need to understand the scope of the Word as you learn how to move into this realm of exceedingly, abundantly above. In Romans 8, 24 and 20 through 26. For we were saved in this hope. How can you be transformed? How can you become born again? Do you understand that? No. Well, it's the same with other things. But hope that is seen is not hope. Same thing with faith. If you can see something, you don't need faith for it. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance, with endurance, with tenacity. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Learn how to use your prayer language, this supernatural gift of God that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that comes with that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. This awesome ability for you to open your mouth and pray, but you're not doing the praying. The Holy Spirit is speaking 
exactly what needs to be prayed. He is speaking the perfect will of God. He is saying those things that you're not capable of saying. This is part of exceedingly abundantly above all that you, in your natural understanding, in your natural mind, can get a hold of. And so don't limit this awesome statement of God, this awesome promise, to just getting stuff. You're believing for a Chevy and God wants to give you a Rolls Royce. No! There's nothing wrong with having a Rolls Royce. Please don't misunderstand me. But that's not the goal. That's not the purpose. The purpose is so much bigger than that. The Lord says to seek first His kingdom, the kingdom of God, and His righteousness. His. And then all these things, whatever they are, will be added unto you. But if you're seeking stuff, you're going to miss the power and the scope of this promise. And this is what I want to teach you. You can be in faith, but still not be able to see the final victory, the full victory, because it's exceedingly abundantly above what you can imagine. And this is where I want you to get. You can be like Elijah as you speak to your mountains and they just move. Elijah didn't have to do a lot of carrying on. He just spoke and his relationship with God caused God to do exactly what Elijah said. You know, I find it really amazing with the numbers of people who watch this program, what a low percentage of you actually get these teachings. And you're cheating yourself because you, you can't grasp what I'm telling you just based on the headlines, which is what this television program basically is. I can explain a concept to you. I can give you the headlines. But you need the whole teaching to build it inside yourself so that it works, so that it is effective, fully effective. Because without building it inside yourself, and that's what these teachings do, and you listen and you listen and you listen, and the people who do, oh my, their results are amazing. Their results are extraordinary. They tap into the provision and healing and power and joy and peace of God in amazing measure. But the ones who just want to go from program to program to program, yeah, they get a little, but they never really get all the way. And you need to not be satisfied with living on the headlines. You need to want the whole teaching, all the scriptures that come to bear, built in you. Because this is what the Word is about. Remember the Lord said in 1 John that if you keep His Word, the whole Word, then the love of God, which puts you in place for this, the love of Christ, will be perfected in you. It will be 100%. It will be perfect because you will be connected. This word is what connects us. And so we look at these heroes of the faith, Abraham, about whom we read. We look at Elijah. We look at all of these people who we say, wow, wouldn't it be great to be like them? But the point is you can be. God's given you the Holy Spirit. Elijah didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Abraham didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but you do. And you have the blood of Jesus, and you have this awesome new covenant. And so as we look at that statement, I've always loved that scripture, but it wasn't until I realized the breadth of its application that I began to really make it my own. Because, unfortunately, in the church, 
so-called today. The Word, of course, is being preached. People are preaching the Word 24 hours a day on multiple networks and radio stations, etc. But they're not preaching, for the most part, they're not preaching the whole Word. They're preaching the parts of it that people like to hear. They're focusing on self-help and doing uh, those things within our willpower, if you will, that are in line with God. They're talking about all sorts of things, but it's still, once you begin to get into these teachings that I have, you will realize, because people tell me this all the time, you will realize how much of this word you've never heard. Now, you may have read through the whole Bible, you may have read past these things, but they were never in your life something that the light was shined on. They were never taught. They were never expanded upon. That's what teaching is for. That's what it's supposed to be for. And that's why the Word says that not many people should desire to be teachers because teachers are held to a higher standard. The Lord says that if we have the Holy Spirit, we know all things. I get so tired of hearing people say, oh, well, one person can't know the whole Word because this person knows this part of it and that person knows that part of it and the other, and therefore we have to listen to all of them to get it. No. No, listening to Christian television just randomly without any selection of who you're listening to is entertainment. It is not teaching. It's just entertainment. If you're content to have one person say, a and another person say B and another person say C, then you're just being entertained. You're not being edified. You have to know the truth. You have to get to a place where when you hear something that is not truth, it's like somebody throwing a glass of ice water in your face. It jolts you and you don't like it and, and you want to wipe it off and get away from it. You don't want to have another glass of ice water in your face. You see, this is the point. And so, when we see something like this, and God reveals to us the amazing scope of it, that's revelation. People are looking for revelation of something they've never heard of, which is why they're so busy, as the Word says, with itching ears, heaping up teachers who will say what they want. They want something intriguing, something they, they don't know about. Well, there's a whole wealth of it here in the Word. And when we look at this particular subject on which I'm teaching today and realize that there are so many times when we are fighting for faith, and I know this has happened to you because it's happened to all of us. It's happened to me. And you're fighting for faith and you're so weighed down with the circumstances with what your eye can see, what your ear can hear, what your emotions are feeling. And you're looking at this situation, and maybe it's been going on for a long time, and it's never improved. Whether it's your finances, whether it's your physical health, whether it's a family situation, whatever it may be, you've dealt with this, and it just keeps getting worse and more complicated, and you have allowed discouragement to take over. Maybe that discouragement has moved into despair. And when someone gets to that place, and I've watched this, they get to that place of despair, of discouragement, where they no longer really hope, let alone go beyond hope. They don't even understand how you can hope for what is beyond hope, contrary to hope. And they read a scripture like this. They read that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or imagine, according to the power that works in them. And their reaction is, yeah, well, why doesn't he? Why didn't he just get on with it then? Because, boy, it doesn't look like it's happening. And they miss the point. See, everything is according to your faith. 
your faith. You have to operate in that faith. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. But we have to give him that to work with. But sometimes it just comes up short. And that's when we latch on to this awesome promise that God has given us that he is able and willing to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can think. So you need to get these teachings. Don't keep putting it off. Don't think that you've heard enough on this program. You may have been stirred up. I hope you have. You may be excited about this scripture, and I hope you are. But you need to have the underpinnings of what goes into this to put you in that place to receive the exceedingly abundantly above in order for it to function at full measure. So get these tapes, CDs, whichever it is, the teachings, and really dig into this. Let it transform. Let the word and the, the revealing of what it really means transform your inner man, strengthened in your inner man by the Spirit, so that you can experience exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine, according to the Holy Spirit who works in you. And this is not about entertainment. The headlines are not enough. You need to really dig in to these teachings because they're your life's blood. There is nothing more important than the Word. And so don't look for entertainment. Look for knowledge. Look for power because it's there. And whatever the bad report is, God is bigger. God has already got the answer for you. And there is nothing, there's nothing that Jesus did not pay for on the cross. So if you've become discouraged, if you've allowed yourself to even go as far as despair, get these teachings and begin to build yourself up to a place where you can receive all that God has for you. God wants to take you beyond all of your natural expectation into supernatural expectation. And that's how we receive. We receive by faith. And that means by what we are expecting to happen beyond the limits of our own understanding. In Hebrews 6, beginning in verse 13, the word says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, surely, without question, certainly, absolutely, with blessing I will bless you, and with multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. People are always swearing oaths. Well, God has given you his oath, and that is absolute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, the absolute certainty of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things, two absolute things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, himself and his word, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor to the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You see, when we put all these things together, and that's what I teach, that's the way I teach. Put all of these things together. 
you can take one of these statements, and as powerful as it is, it still is only able to be seen to a measure. But you start putting all of these things together, which I do in my teachings that I offer you, and it begins to explode inside you. It begins to be a fire. It begins to go from, well, that's great, and I hope so, and I really want to believe it, and I'll pray it, but, oh, gee, I don't know, to knowing, because God is working his exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine within you. And the thing is that that becomes a reality when you, when you see it. And you have to see it with the eye of faith. And that's what building the word inside you does. You can have reached that place of frustration, of discouragement, of despair. But you can know that God's going to go beyond all of that. The only limits that you have are in your mind. That's where the fight of faith is. That's where the battle is. But God has given you the mind of Christ once you learn how to use it. So stop reasoning things out. Reasoning is not a product of faith. Faith goes beyond reason because reason is attached to this natural world. And it will never take you where you want to be because this covenant, this awesome, radical covenant that Jesus gave us is not reasonable to our natural minds. Salvation, just the very beginning of it, isn't reasonable, let alone the new birth, let alone the miracles that belong to you. It's not reasonable. So when you try and reason it through, you'll never move fully into this supernatural realm where you can have exceedingly abundantly above all that you are capable of imagining, let alone asking for. There are things that you, if you understood them, you could ask for them, but you don't. And then once you grasp that next level, God will take you higher, exceedingly abundantly above that and above that and above that because there are no limits with God. There are limits inside us, but we have to just blast them out of there and receive God's unlimited blessings. I will see you next time. Meanwhile, remember, you shall know the truth, and it's the truth that will make you free. We trust that you have been encouraged in God's Word during this broadcast. If you have and would like others to enjoy the teaching, write to us or to order materials or to make a gift by phone. You can by calling the phone number on the screen.